It's episode two of Listen to Your Heart, recapped by yours truly, and I am so ready to dig into this drama with you, but I'm also so ready for Chris Harrison to stop saying, and I quote, listen to your heart. So let's get right into this. So in true Bachelor fashion, Chris Harrison of course comes in to stir the pot. He gives out a date card, but not just to anyone. Of course it's to the girl who has already had a date. Another one for those producers and another win for Chris Harrison because the pot has been stirred. So Jamie, who gets the date card, who has already been involved in a love triangle, takes Trevor, the boy who came out triumphant, and the one that a lot of people in Bachelor Nation are comparing to Jed. So at this point, Jamie and Trevor's date seems to be going swimmingly. They play on the Venice Beach boardwalk. They have a great time. My question is this. They have the guitar case open, obviously for donations, but my question is, do they get to keep the money? Are the producers taking it to fund the next spinoff? Like these are the questions that haunt me. So honestly, Trevor and Jamie, if you're out there, please let me know, did you get to keep the cash? Cut to a hot blonde girl walking into the mansion named Natasha. And if we have learned anything throughout this franchise, people, it's one thing, and that people that hot are up to no good, none. Fact check me, please. Hot equals trouble. Treble. <laughs> Use it. So Natasha walks in with that confidence behind her, and she is also ready to stir stuff up, but this time with Trevor's past. Surprise, surprise, Jamie and Trevor end up in a hot tub, the Bachelor loves bodies of water, especially if swimsuits and shirtless men are involved. They are talking about past relationships at this point. Jamie says she has been cheated on by every single guy she's dated, which obviously is very sad for all of us to hear, especially because at the same time we're hearing Natasha back at the mansion saying that he cheated on his ex, which was her close girlfriend. Yikes. At this point, Trevor's asked about his past relationship and he says that it went on a little too long and that he made mistakes. But Jamie, although she's been cheated on in every relationship, is not taking the hints. Natasha says she's 10 years older than Jamie and wants to give her advice because if she was that age, she wished somebody older would have looked out for her. But Natasha is missing one main point. When we are all young, we listen to absolutely no one. So that advice is going in one ear and right out the other. I'm sure it happened with Natasha too. Next up is one of my favorite couples this season, Bree and Chris. They seem like they're going to get married by June. So them getting a date was just us finally getting to see some love on the screen. They go to a guitar shop and it was very sweet until they started talking to each other through song. I understand that musicians speak through their song, but they went step by step through a rose ceremony. Literally, it was the cringiest thing I have ever seen. It was almost like a poetry night that went wrong and they were trying to be romantic, but they redeemed themselves later by having an actual conversation and not trying to make a song out of it and they confess that they're both falling in love with each other. So cheers to Bachelor ABC because they got a couple that's falling in love by the second episode. If that's not lucky, I don't know what is. But we're all rooting for Brie and Chris for sure. The next date card goes to Austin's very own Sheridan, who of course is going to pick the girl he's had eyes for the entire time and has not strayed, Julia. The problem with Julia is she is not a one-man kind of girl. She's still feeling out her feelings with Brandon as well. Not only does she have to say yes to going on the date, but the date card says, choose someone you are ready to go public with. That is very aggressive, Chris Harrison. We are on episode two and you do not need to hurt Sheridan in this way. To be fair, Julia is like every woman out there. If you are receiving too much attention, too much love all at once when you're not ready for it, it's not well received. So the sad part is, it's toxic, we know, but he probably should give her some space and not be so into her. Julia and Sheridan are so cute. They go on their date, they're on a radio show, they have five minutes to put together a song. Obviously, Julia picked it, which is another reason why I think this is so sweet because 
Sheridan's like staring obviously at a phone or something in front of him trying to know the lyrics and he's letting her shine. So that's just another cute moment where I say Sheridan is a great guy. We meet a guy named Danny for the first time who supposedly had been there the entire time. We literally don't know who this guy is. I don't know his background. Apparently he's with a girl named Becca who we've also seen two seconds of. So that's a whole storyline I'm just not even gonna acknowledge at this point. And the final date card goes to Savannah the Dark Horse. She's beautiful and I thought she was gonna run the show honestly whenever she first came in, but she's kind of laid back a little. We've seen her connect with Brandon but haven't seen much else. So I've been really excited to see her come out of her bubble, see her personality other than being a chill yoga instructor. She asked Brandon who for some reason has become the hot commodity of the house. So Savannah and Brandon go to this cute little jazz club where they have a couple that's been together forever singing. Bachelor also loves to do that. Bring in these old couples and have them give them advice as if they only haven't known each other for like 48 hours and they already need marital advice. Anyways, so Savannah and Brandon go up and sing on open mic night, but what song do they choose? Fever. And I'm sorry, but in this climate, in this day and age, my only thought when I hear the word fever is how high is it and are you six feet apart? And those people, they were not six feet apart. I'm just really concerned. But honestly, it is the most chemistry I've seen so far when they're singing to each other and their voices and harmonies blend so well Probably the best performance I've seen so far. So that was one of the top moments of the episode this week. Where's Ryan? I mean, like, we... I just... I just want to see Ryan. I have been watching this show for over an hour, and I've only seen Ryan, the star of the show, for two seconds. We need screen time, and we need it now. And now we have the before rose ceremony party where everyone gets as desperate as they've ever been on national television. Julia then goes guns a blazing to Brandon and proceeds to suck his face off following two other girls who have attacked him thus far in the night. Is Brandon The Bachelor? Am I watching a new season of The Bachelor right now? I mean, ladies, there are other options out there. Natasha then kisses our sweet Ryan, who looks like a sexy Harry Potter, as Rudy says. And we honestly are really confused why she's into him. He even says, I don't think I'm your normal type. And she goes, no, sweetie, I like the nerdy kind. But I'm pretty sure it's just a ruse to get the rose. We'll see in upcoming episodes if she trades him out for a newer model. So at this point, we see that Rudy has kind of gone off the rails. She's got some very high highs, very low lows. We don't know what she's gonna do next, but then she fixates on her next target, Matt. And what does she do? She goes crazy. I mean, I cannot get a read on this girl. Her conversation is like aggressive. She slaps him, then she's chuckling, and then all of a sudden they end up making out. It's time for the row ceremony in hyperspeed because honestly, it might be the most boring part of the show. So, up first is the easy couple. We know it's coming, Chris picks Bree. Second, Trevor, we know who he likes. He picks Jamie, at least until someone he likes more comes in. Next up is Matt, and this is a shocker. He picks Rudy, so they're back together as a couple even though they struggled in episode one. Next, we have Ryan, our sweet, sexy Harry Potter who picks Natasha who might just suck the innocence out of him. Then there's Danny who picks Becca and everyone's so relieved and I'm like, why? I don't even know these characters. Then we have Brandon and he picks, of course, Savannah. Now earlier, Julia said she would be very shocked if Brandon didn't pick her and honestly, she needed a reality check because he had just told her like five times to her face, I like Savannah, I like Savannah, I like Savannah but it just wasn't cutting through. So finally he laid it down and he said, Savannah, Julia looks very disappointed. Cut to our sweet Sheridan who has the last rose and he picks Julia. Although she had obviously just rejected him, the heart wants what the heart wants. And by golly, Sheridan listens to his heart. And in the end, in reality TV fashion, everything seems great, everyone's in love, couples are secure. Cut to Brandon giving Julia a hug. 
He's saying he'd like to talk. Tune in next week because honestly, the trailer looked pretty good. Drama starts to stir up. I would say episode one was better than episode two for me. It just was more exciting. So hopefully episode three, whenever all the competitions start, it should get better. I'm excited for the singing. They actually have picked people who have amazing talent. So next week, there's some sort of competition. We don't know how it's gonna go. If they end up with a prize, a record deal, I don't know if this is like American Idol, who knows? But we'll all find out together next week.